forget or something to search for. You should always have this. Okay, now list the current working directory. And what's the command to list the work, current working directory? It's pwd, which is print the working directory, right? And this is the directory that we are in, which is home cloud user. How do we know that this, this tilt sign that you see, right? It, it shows that you're in the home directory in first place. You just have the still sign shows that you're in the home directory, okay? And you are and you are signed in as this. So always, just as how you see in Windows, right? Whenever you, you sign in, you have your username and that's where you sign in and you have your login, right? The same way. So whenever you log in, you're in that home directory of that user that you logged in. So here the username is cloud underscore user. The next is you have to list the existing home directory. So yeah, you're here in the directory, but then how do we list files? So of course, in Windows, we have everything there. We have, uh, we can go and uh, look for the folders or all the directory structures. We have the drives there, but how do we do it here? How do we know that in this home directory, what are the files or the directories or the folders that's there? Can we, can you use the command ls? Yeah, you can use command ls and when you do ls, it does not show anything. When I do ls um, score a or all ls space dash a space a take right. Okay, it lists all the files in there and all those are hidden files look like because it starts with dot, okay? So all those are hidden files. But then let's see uh, here the command that we have. That's interesting. So, Now we have listed all that it's inside the home directory, right? And what are the... Um... Yeah, we, we listed all the home directories that are on the drive. So it's letting us know that Bill has a home directory, Santos has one, Jason has one, Juan has one, Sally has one. All of these users have a home directory. And it's telling us the rights of each. Yeah. This D here, I see here all these. This D in the first place here, all these says like these are the directories. And this, and if you talk about the file permissions, um, one important thing is, maybe I should open up one second. When I have to talk about the file permissions, this is very important to learn. So you have the first uh, character, which if it is blank, okay, it's just a file. But if it says D, then it is, it's a directory, okay? And the next one is the next three, three uh, characters there. And then we'll have the other three and then the other three, okay? All these three would be the read, write, and the execute permissions. And even this is read, write, execute. This is read, write, and execute, okay? But this is for the user, for that user, okay? And this is for the group that the user is in for the everyone that's that's in the group and this is for others okay so uh, one thing to note is sometimes we will say this user as just you when, when you had to go and give permissions you'll say just you 
and this group you will just say as G and others you will say as O. Okay, so far good. Anyone has any doubts? Um, I have a question, quick question. You said if it's blank, it doesn't have a D. What does that mean again? You said that's a directory it means? It, it's a file. If it's D, it's directory. If it's the first character is blank, then it's a file. Okay, all right. Thank you. But there's also something called sticky bits, isn't it, Diego? Even before that, sometimes we have a sticky bit before that. Before the D? Yeah, sometimes we used to have that. Um, if we don't have to change the file permission or for some reason we have a sticky bit. I don't remember what it's for. Okay. Okay. So anyone else have any, any other doubts? So we can continue, right? Okay. So with that, now, now if you know this, now that we're going to, it's going to be easier now for the next steps. So now you know that we have all these directories for Bill, Santos, Cloud underscore users. So all these are users, right? They have their own directory, home directories. And the, this is the home directory. And now, Going to the next step here. It says lock these accounts. Okay. So what's what's the just having uh, this is the command to lock the account. Password hyphen L is lock. Okay. So but we don't want to do this one by one for each user. So we are just using a script, just a for loop here. So for I in Bill and Susan, and what's the other user? It is Juan. Okay, mm -hmm. what do we do? What, what should we do? We should lock their passwords. So sudo is to elevate the privileges because only administrator, the root user can do this, right? Do such activities. So we elevate the privileges and then give password that's to lock the password. And what is this dollar I means is we have this for loop, right? So for each user, this happens. And I is equal to one, two, three, this happens. Sorry, this Isabel, we can't see what you're showing us. You can't see it on the to... bottom? No, on, I think you have to... screen? I can oh. see your screen. You it's on the screen, yeah, 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 exactly. You can see it now. Okay. Yeah, it's on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So next time I'll make sure to clear the screen. Yeah. So with this, so far, okay. So we're locking the screen using the password hyphen L command. And because we don't want to go through this command each and every time for each user, we're just using this loop, okay. And it's asking for the password. So what do I do? I go back. I have this password here. Copy it for this. And it, it logged all those users. Right? Now, we are going to create few users. Okay, we are going to create the accounts for these um, in these names for Nancy, Greg, and Jeremy. And for creating the user, the command is user add hyphen m. Okay, so this is the you can just do it just one um, one user at a time as well. But because we are doing uh, for three users, we are just using this for loop and executing this command just in one go, okay? So for locking the password, it is password hyphen L. And if you have to add any user, just as how you do in Windows, you go and configure, right? If you have to add an, an additional user to your computer, the same way you're going to add user to this server as well, so that they can ha all have their own locations. 
So same way I give for I N Nancy Gregory me. To what should we do? We have to, as usual, elevate the privileges because all these are one that can be done with the root privileges and it's done. And how do we know it's done? You can run the, the LL again, the one that you did LL home, right? Exactly. So now we had Nancy, Greg, Jeremy, so all those created, right? No. Uh, remove the bill as a user. Next step is remove the bill as user and transfer the ownership of his home directory. Okay, now the next step is to view JSON's permission and the command is. I have a question, Suba. Uh, before you move on, like you, I remember that you said that you took away privileges of like Suzanne and stuff like that. So how do you see it in the directory that this uses the ones that have privileges and the users that don't? Is there any way you can tell from what you did? Their account is locked. That's what I say. Their, their password is locked. They'll not be able to log in, I guess, but not. Uh, they're still there, but just that they'll not be able to use their uh, password for now. But my question is, if I do that and I forget who I locked it for, how do I tell? Mm, yeah, that's a really good question, but I, I don't know. <laughs> Did you, you have any idea? I'm not, I'm not thought about the administrator side of it. Oh, I, I thought like on the directory that you pulled it might show a certain way that you could tell like, hey, listen, like these have like, as privileges or not, so I guess it doesn't show on the directory that these users might not have. Yeah, probably we should find that out. You can give me a second, I'll, I'll check. Let me check my Linux box real quick. Just give me a minute. I know I'm, I'm pretty sure I can get it. I have it here. I'm bringing my, my Unix box or my Linux box up real quick. I'm pretty sure there's a way of doing it. Give me one second. I'll, I'll get you that while you keep on going. Okay. We will check those users now. Yeah. You got the, yes. Go ahead. This is the you, one. The password minus ID. S, right? Minus yeah. S. Okay. Yeah. ID. Correct. That's what I was about to tell you right now. Yeah. The password minus S on the user. Yeah. It means the status, status of that user. So you just mm -hmm. give password hyphen L for lock, right? The same way when you give S, it is for the status of that. And you, mm -hmm. I just wanted to know about Bill. So just give Bill and it says password locked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And you'll see the LK on the left. It says Bill LK, and it gives you the, the date and uh, of when it happened. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. I just I just was confused because I thought like the directory will show like the locked ones, not locked ones. No, so you can no, that would be the directory itself, which is completely different than the user. User. Good okay. question. So we learned something new. Good. Mm -hmm. 
and this is the ID, ID for JSON. What, what ID is, so whenever we create a user, they are, they are given an ID, like a user ID, the group ID, right? So this says, it's this is the user ID that's assigned to JSON. Probably uh, we created, who else we created? Uh, Nancy, we can check. So this, this is the user ID for Nancy and group ID, okay? So this is how you get the ID for those users. Because sometimes when you have to execute, you have to know the ID of that user. Just as how um, the users has these ID, the group has the, an ID, the process that each and every process that's running here as, as a number, as an ID attached to it, right? So this is how you get to know the ID of it. So now we, we learned about adding the user, right? This add, user add hyphen M creates the user, but how do we delete the user? It is user del, delete, as in, okay? Let's delete Bill here. And we'll go back and check if Bill is deleted. Yeah. Bill should still be there as, as a directory, but if we go check for the user, he, the user should be gone. So if we show go ID bill, the ID bill should be completely gone. And which is, if you notice, the database automatically now is giving us the value of 1004, which is his original number that was associated with him. But there's no reference that can translate it to bill anymore. Yeah, there's no bill here. Mm -mm. Here you saw bill. Mm -hmm. The directory exists, but the user does not. Does that make sense to everyone? So you see the first two columns there, the user and the group is gone. And then the blue one, which is the folder that still exists. The folder itself is still there. Is that clear? Anyone have doubts? Anyone? Okay. So I, I do have a question. So the 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 you said the user uh the user got deleted, the directory exists. So the directory will never get deleted, right? So basically, when we added earlier, we didn't add users, we added directories, including users, when okay. we added the three people, right? Before? Yeah, we, okay. the, this is a directory, and this directory was associated to a user and, and a group. Whenever you add a brand new user, Linux will create uh, its home directory for it. You are correct. Just like Windows, if when you add a brand new user and he logs in for the first time, it'll create the user's uh, home folder. In this case, what they want you to understand is when you kill the user, it removes the user from the database. The folder itself retains itself, it's still there. And since the rights said that it was 1004, before it used to be able to translate 1004 to Bill, because that's his ID. Yes. That's his real ID. So the moment that we killed his ID and we ran the, the actual command again, now it has nothing to be able to look up. So it gives us a true value, which is 1004, 1004, and Bill is the folder. Make sense? Yes, yes, yes. So a question to you all. So you see, I, I told you about all these, right? About the permissions and the, all that stuff. So, what is this and this? What's the difference between these two? One's the user, one's the group. Yes, right. So this is the user bill and this- Or group. owner. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the, the owner of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you understand that, then we can move on to the other stuff. Now, now we uh, every user that we created has their own home directory, and we saw that they have their user 
and also the group, they all have the same name, right? And now what we are going to do is change the ownership. For example, we are going to change the ownership of bill that we that we removed. So now bill directory does not have any user or any group that's associated to, right? That, that's what we removed some time back. So now we're going to change that to uh, Nancy. We're going to move that to Nancy and we're going to move it to Jason's group, okay? Again, all these are administrative uh, task like which needs root privileges we're going to elevate it and uh, chawon c-h-o-w-n i mean changing the ownership is what is the command for this okay c-h-w-o-n that's the command and the hyphen r says i mean it's capital r okay hyphen r says that recursively that's <laughs> That is anything that is inside that folder, okay? You, you can have a folder, but anything inside that folder, even you have a folder on files inside that, all that also takes that permission, whatever you're giving now, you're changing now, okay? That, that's what recursively means, hyphen R, the capital R means, okay? So anything even inside the directory, also all those permissions also gets changed. Because most of the time, what we do is just change the permission of that just one folder or a file. If you don't, if you don't use a hyphen R, the anything that's inside does not change. Any folder that you have inside does not change. They have the same permission. You have to go and change those permissions separately. But doing it recursively, when you give hyphen that stack capital R, is going to change everything inside that. So we have hyphen n and usually this is the format that's followed. So it's username, okay, and colon group name. So what's the user user that we want to user have to want to associate to? It's Nancy here. And the group that we have to we wanted to move to is Jason. Okay, and who do we want to move? We want build folder this home directory to move to the nancy user on jason's group so use chawon command and this is user colon ownership if you just put nancy colon nancy then it will just take the user as nancy and group has also nancy okay so this is use user and this is a group Now, what, what happened to Bill? Once we did this, executed this, now if you see Bill, see Bill here, the user for this Bill directory is changed to Nancy and the group is changed to JSON, right? Just using this command, did this. I have a question. Yeah. So what is the, <clears throat> so what does the group actually mean like? When you say Jason's group or whatever, what does that actually mean? Okay, usually what happens, um, maybe in AWS we'll learn it as identity and access management, okay? So whenever we just have users, okay. So, but just having the users and giving each user a permission is going to be, if you have just two users, it's okay. But it's consider an organization, okay? And uh, you're going to have, um, thousands of employees there. And you'll have thousands of users, that means, right? You're going to have thousands of accounts created there. And each of those users will, will have to have different permissions based on their uh, work profile, but based on their role that they take, right? Maybe an HR will have a different set of permission than a 
a software developer or a cloud engineer. Um, administrator will have a different kind of permission, right? So, do you think each and every one probably uh, somebody um, in the administrative group would have mm -hmm. a privilege? But probably um, a cloud engineer might have a lesser privilege, right? And also, uh, maybe the HR department would have all the confidential documents with them. They would have a separate uh, set of privileges, and the usual, the normal employee, which is was other than the HR department will not have the privileges, or shouldn't have the access to all those documents, right? So each one has a different permission, but do you think we'll have to go and give mm -hmm. permission to each and every one, each and every thousand users, 10,000 users? No, right? So what we do, we create groups and we assign those users to a specific group and only those groups are given permissions. We don't give permission to each and every user, mm -hmm. But in, in turn, we create the groups and we assign permissions to those groups. That way it makes them, um, if you have to even revoke the permission, then it makes it easier. If you have to change the permission in any way, you don't have to go and make changes to each and every user. You just do it for that group. So in the case of Nancy and Jason, basically yeah. Nancy owns, Nancy is the owner of Jason's group. No, you're saying in this file here, yeah, I think you're getting confused because they, they kind of double dip the chip. So the owner or the user is the person. As for the group, that would be like if you're in marketing, if you're in IT, if you, uh, let's say if you're in the military, then maybe they, you may have certain classification levels. So they'll create groups based on what you may or may not access, be that is by role or be by certain access itself that they require. Each single file has an owner, in other words, the person that owns that file, and it has a group that it's associated to. And the last permission that you can do is to everyone else or any other person that you want to give access. As we see here on the first line, you can see specifically that there is a directory that has what we call the rights of 700s. In other words, the directory has read, write, and execute for only the owner, the group, and everyone else has no rights. And where do I get this? Does everyone remember our friend binary? So if we remember our friend binary, there is three spots here that I can turn on, which is my read, my write, and my execute. So if we remember that, that means this first value, two to the zero is one. Two to the one is two and two to the two is four. So that's where I get the value seven because if I turn the three of them on, it becomes seven. So here, specifically for the folder bill, we gave Nancy now as being the owner. She owns this file. She completely has full control of the folder. And since we set it with R, Every single file and or folder within Bill is now hers. She is the owner. Now, anyone that is in the JSON group, lack of a better name, anyone that's in the JSON group would be able to also have capabilities of coming in. But what rights do they have? Can somebody tell me? Nothing right now. We haven't really gave them any like type of read That's the group that it owns it, it comes into right so she's the owner she's got favor she's got full rights she's got seven or uh, read write and execute the group has nothing right but as always she's got the one that has full rights does that make sense yeah I'm so that's how that's how they touch these things to make sure that they're able to do this windows does the same thing but they do it in a different way. What they do is 
they create in a GUI format their groups, and then you throw your, your users inside the groups, and then all files and folders, except for the users specific group is usually assigned to a group. That's how you should administer files. All right. And as uh, Suba alluded to, it's much easier if I give HR rights than every single person in HR, one by one, give them rights to every single file. It's easier just to give it to the actual department and then add the user to that group. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think we were like in step right before removing the other person, Sally and Juan. I think this is where we were. But before that, if you want, I when you when you just see here at Google Docs, we, we have the same file permissions here. And we go and share it. What does it say? Because because I'm this is my account, right? So I'm the owner of this file. But I can also share it with anybody, right? I can at any group, so in anybody, any one particular user also here. Probably um, if I had to add Chad, it's my up to me because I'm the owner of uh, this file. I can give him edit permission or just give him just view permission or just not even that, I mean, you want to comment as well, right? It's the same way we have this user, if we had to give permission for others, then what they could do is add the any, anyone else to that group. So anyone in that group and whatever permission is assigned to that group, they, they can carry out any operations based on that permission. With that, we'll move on to the next one. So now this, um, Nancy has read, write, execute permission, right? This is because I think we skipped a section. I think we're here. Okay. Um, no, have we removed Susan yet? Yeah, no, nope. I think we're, we're removing here. Susan, I think is where we're supposed to be. We removed Bill and then we just gave, uh, it's Nancy, yeah, and well, the, so I think we're going to go and do this here. Yeah. Yeah, we should be on six. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to change um, the permission to the group. Now, for the group, we don't have any permission at all, right? Just for the user, we have rewrite and execute permission. But for the group, we don't have any other permission. So, what's the command to change the permission? It is chmod, C H M O D. Okay, uh, it is changing the mode of that um, directory. So as usual, we elevate the privileges. We give chmod, and now which permit to who should we give permission to? It's for the group, right? We have so many ways to change, give permissions, but this is one of the way. Okay, mm -hmm. there are so many ways to give. So you, you can use numbers, all those, uh, because you read. Uh, perm, I mean. For the read, you, you can give four, and for write, you can give uh, two, and for execute, it is one, number one, okay? So all add up together. If you ha have to give all read, write, and execute permission, you give seven. Seven just for the user. If you can give seven, 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 that means that seven goes to user. If that, uh, the first seven, it gives all read, write, and execute permission for the user. And the second seven, we can even have four, okay? That means they have only, the group has just the right permission. Probably a, a later on, I'll, I'll uh, give that, but the, that's also one of the ways that you can give permission. But here we use this method where we just specify the group, which is uh, G here, and we are gonna add permission, okay? If it is adding the permission, then you give a plus sign. If you have to remove the permission, then it's, minus so you're going to add permission and what what are the permissions that you're going to give for this group it is read and execute okay and you're going to give it
to this directory, which is build directory. Password here. Okay, so now again, go and list the permission. So before that, I will also do this. You see, Bill has now read and execute permission. This group has read and execute permission, right? And, and when you go and list the, all the files and directories, inside bill, okay, home bill, everything inside has a different permission as you see, it's not just, the, now the group does not have the read and execute, just as you see in the directory here, it does not have the same permission here. This permission that you changed was just for this home slash bill, right? And that got changed here. So far good. Now, the next step is remove Susan as user and transfer ownership of her home directory. So now one more user deleted. And as you all know, there is no more a uh, user or a group called Susan, right? We just have the directory here. I have to go and change the ownership to this user Greg and Jason group. So when you see the last line here for Susan, we have Greg as a user and Jason group. It's added, this directory is added to this user and group now. Now, you also see the permission we have here, right? Just the user has read, write, and execute permission and there is no permission that's attached to the group or others. I'm going to change the directory permissions um, for that group, okay? I'm sorry, the group permissions is to just read and execute. And I'm using the same chamat command. And now you see here in the last line here. Now the group has read and execute permission that we gave here. To the group, right? Now, the next step is to remove Joanna's user and transfer ownership of his home directory. Okay, here is the Joanne, okay? So, first let's find the ID of Joanne. Uh, it's 1006 and now we're going to delete Joanne. Once that is done, now we see here, right? It's deleted and we just have this user ID and the group ID now. Now we change this ownership Jeremy and the group to Sally. See, Jeremy, Sally. 
they go, sir, it's Jeremy now, and the group is Sally. So this Joanne home directory. Now again, we change the permission for this. If you're just making, do this repeatedly is going to help you remember this. I think that that's the concept of this lab. You do the things repeatedly for all these. And now we are cloud underscore user, right? For now, this is the username. But now, now the user is non C. You guys understand how we did this? If you recall, in all previous ones, if we do a pseudo or a sue by itself, it will automatically, if you don't give it an ID, assume that you want root or the admin user. In this case, she's now tacting out exactly what user she wants to swap to. Make sense? And the reason we know is because in the front, it now changed from being cloud user at the IP to being Nancy at that given IP. And we're at the home directory. And what is our present working directory? Because we, we moved to the user Nancy, right? We changed to user Nancy. Now the home directory is, it says Nancy. Okay. Now I want us to see if we could actually go to Bill since we gave Nancy rights. So it wants to see if we could actually change our directory and see if we can actually move to Bill. And if you notice now it's no longer little tiddly, I'm actually now at Bill. Because this user Nancy, mm -hmm. that's the um, home directory, just Bill. The key thing they want you to understand is Bill stayed exactly where it was. The only thing that we changed was the owner or the group that can access Bill. But if we were piping to it or trying to change ourselves to get there, it's still in the exact same space. It's It did not replace Nancy's, sorry, Nancy's uh, home. All it did was just give capabilities for Nancy to be able to change her directory and reach any file in that area. Okay. So now, now we'll create a new file, okay? So instead of doing touch and all that, I'm just going to I'm just going to echo something, probably echo hello, okay, to a file. This is, I'm going to re redirect it. This double greater than sign means I'm just redirecting it and um, I'm appending it to that file, okay? So we had somewhere probably before this. We have files, um, bill underscore files one, two, three, uh, until 10. So we are going to take one file, which is file one here, okay? 
probably we can we can cap that file out first and see what's what's inside probably okay that's a file right so i'm going to there's nothing in there seems to be just, empty yeah. yeah so there is not nothing in that file okay so i'm going to just echo hello I'm going to have this in this file. And now I cut out and have what I was that I redirected it to, right? Now, why do we need this? Okay, this is because to verify that whatever permission that we gave to Nancy, right? What permission we gave to Nancy for this bill um, directory? It was read, write, and execute, right? So we were able to write it. We were also able to read it out, right? So we confirmed that by writing it to the file. Now, the tail command. The tail command is uh, there's something called head and also tail, the two commands. Okay, head command uh, displays the top 10 lines in that file. So, if, if you have a file that is very large, okay, but you, you know that you need something in the beginning, the first 10 lines is, uh, can be displayed, and all that you need is only that, then you can just say head and then the file name. Okay, but if you put tail, then it's going to give the bottom 10 lines of that file. But all that we have in this file is just one line, so it's not going to make any sense. Okay, for now, but just remember and also explore yourself. Go and create a file with number of lines or take a file that has number of lines and uh, use all these with the grip command combine those commands we have already have to pipe it uh, and grip it okay find a find a text in that finally find a line explore yourself and learn okay so what is what is the the tag n1 what does that yeah, stand for i think it's just the last uh, single line it's yeah. just the lines that you have that is to. correct the number amount of lines that you want to show if i put a two there it'll show me the last two lines Okay. I say 20, but by default, it will just display 10 lines, okay? But if you just give the number, it's going to give you that many number of lines, okay? But this one, this is not going to make any sense because there's only one line here. Okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. And same way, you can use the same thing for the head command as well. Head mm -hmm. like again one. If you just give five, then it's going to give just the first five lines. Okay, I think that's it for this lab. All right, stop the recording there.